Hey friends, this is Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. This video is the first in a multi-part series on how to program acoustic guitar. It's also an overview of AmpleSound's strummer feature within their AGT2 plugin, which is a sample of a Taylor 714 CE. I have it set to strum patch, which gives you a more percussive, thinner sound than pick and finger mode. This is ideal for strumming over multiple instruments such as drums, bass, piano, etc. If you're already familiar with the layout of AGT's strum mode, you can skip this video and watch the next one if it's available. If you have AGT, AGM, AGL, or AG12, then you can follow along with this video series. When you open up an instance of AGT within your DAW, you need to click the strum patch at the top center of your interface. AGL doesn't have a strum patch, however, pick will be fine. An optional feature that I like to use for more cut through sound is stroke noise. This feature triggers the percussive sound the pick creates when strumming over multiple strings. It's automatically triggered when you play multiple notes at the same time. You basically set it and forget it. Next, you need to click on the strummer tab on the top left corner of the interface. This is a strummer engine, one of the multiple ways to achieve a strum pattern. When the toggle switch is set to off, you can only play the guitar like a keyboard. You don't have access to automatic chords or strum patterns. When you switch it on, the plugin gives you access to the articulation key switches. Here. 24 preset chords. I'll give you an example. Eight preset strum patterns that start on middle C. All of these which you can easily customize and save. It also gives you single string picking. Two down strokes. One up stroke. Two muted strokes. Palm mute. I think these are silent right here. It also gives you strum time velocity, which I'll get into later. It has virtually everything you need to create the pattern you want. Now let's go back into Strummer. Since this is an overview, I'll only cover the most important features. In the second window, we have our chord menu. If you have an 88 key keyboard, the presets will begin on C2 which is two octaves below middle C. Make sure your chord bank is set to select and not detect. In select mode, you have two pages of chord banks you can customize. The default setting is set to a standard pop chord bank, which is pretty intuitive in my opinion. However, you can change the main key by clicking the transpose button next to the select button. I'm going to choose the key of E major. Choose the key your song is in and it will change all the chords in the chord bank. If you want to set a specific chord to a specific key on your keyboard, you can do so by first pressing on the key you want to use for that chord. I'll use F sharp on my keyboard. Set the chord root. 
I'm just going to choose a G sharp. Change the chord type. You have a large list right here of common chords. Let's do a diminished seventh. Then choose the chord register, meaning how high or low you want it. Well, let's cycle through these, see how these sound. I'll stick with that one just for demonstration purposes. And you can even customize the chord by adding notes or muting certain strings. And you can add notes by simply clicking on the string you want. And if you want the strings muted, you can Simply click them and they disappear. This will change the chord type to user. If you want to save this chord bank, you can click the icon to the left of the page one button and simply name it. Detect mode detects the chord you play and matches it to the standard guitar fingering for that chord depending on the inversion you use. For example, if I play E major in root position, meaning E is the bottom note, then strummer will play E in the lowest register. However, if I play E major in first inversion, meaning that the third of the chord is on the bottom, then strummer will play E major in the second register. If I play E major in second inversion, meaning the fifth of the chord is on the bottom, then, then strummer will play it in the third register. An important thing to mention is that you can't save the chords in detect mode. The next window is our sequencer, which shows us the pattern that is currently loaded. In this case, the pattern starts on middle C. When I hold down middle C, the pattern will trigger and will stop as soon as I release the key. Right now the sync button is activated, meaning it'll follow the tempo of the host's software. In my case, this is Logic Pro, which is set at 134 beats per minute. Just like the chord bank, patterns can be customized to fit your song and saved in a pattern bank for use in other songs or within instances of other Ample Sound guitar plugins. These can be triggered by playing the notes C sharp 4, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C sharp 5, and D sharp 5. Inside the sequencer window, there is a default matrix consisting of 16 columns representing 16th note divisions and 14 rows representing the types of strumming articulations you want to access. The bottom six rows are the six guitar strings from lowest to highest. Then we have two downstrokes, an upstroke, and the rest of the strum articulations I mentioned earlier. We'll cover this in detail in the next videos. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll be showing how to use Strummer within a song. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you like this video and want to see more, hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.